All right, it is time for reading challenge vlog week number two. Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you this reading vlog. I am starting my second week of my May reading challenge where I, every week I pick five titles from my currently reading and I aim to read 500 pages from those works to a grand total of 2,000 pages for the month. So that's actually the goal is 2,000 pages from my currently reading which I break down to 500 pages each week and further break down to try and aim for 72 pages a day. So with these vlogs I am working towards that goal of 72 pages a day and hopefully 500 for the week. Um, so each week I pick a new set of five titles. I will leave a link to the announcement video where like the big reveal video up above where I also recap the first week and how it went but I'm just going to share them quickly now um, and um, just to start this off and then I'm actually going to go and do my timed reading and to see what my pace for each of these titles are and then I have a bunch of other stuff that I want to do including I really would like to get to some art today. Um, I'm taking Carlos Sondheim's year-long class as I have for many years and this the current assignment is to create patterns and I just I really want to do that all I want to do is just sit and make patterns and just you know that's it what could be better than that so I do actually have to also edit a bunch of vlogs because I decided to do these daily instead of weekly so I think that's actually not bad pairing because vlogging takes like when editing uh, there's lots of moments where you need to wait so while it's waiting I can do patterns and then go back and forth so hopefully that'll work out well I don't know what the other thing I wanted to do is it's behind this list of this whole pack of books because of the things that didn't get picked this week <laughs> I've had to refilm this a few times so forgive me if I say something twice or forget to say something. Vlogging is a little like that. It's just a little, and I'm trying to be okay with that. I'm trying to be okay with it being a bit imperfect, but even saying the word imperfect gets me a little like, <laughs> but it's okay. All right, so let's very briefly look at the five titles for this week. And the first up we have The Structure of Scientific Revolution by Thomas S. Kuhn. This is a nonfiction science work, and I think it's on science philosophy. I've only read eight pages plus the introduction, so there is still a lot to go. It is definitely a denser work, both in just in concept as well as um, uh, as well as. Oh, what's that? Looks like some kind of measuring devices. Atwood's machine invented in 1784 by the Reverend George Atwood. It offers experimental proof of Newton's laws of motion. Look, it's got interesting pictures, but it's mostly dense text and I have no idea how much will stick. We will find out. We will find out. I'm looking forward to that, even though uh, it's not something uh, I know a lot about. But hey, why why read nonfiction? Why not read nonfiction about stuff you don't know about, right? Like. It's, it's a good thing, right? Anyway, my other nonfiction is The Diary of Aeneas Nin, Volume 1, 1931 to 34. Um, this one I actually forgot that I put in the jar because I have been reading this on and off for years, but I tend to stop reading it when it gets to um, her referencing a literary work that I haven't read. So I think that happened, and I don't think I've read what she's referenced, so I have no idea how reading that one is going to go, but we are going to roll with it. So those are the two nonfiction. Then the three fiction are Polar Vortex by Shani Moto. This is a Canadian literary fiction. It was a finalist for the Giller Prize. I started it this year and got about, I think, two-fifths of the way through and um really enjoyed it. it's very compelling um i just i couldn't i didn't finish it by the time it was a book club pick for the giller has a book club this year and um i didn't read it in time so i put it aside so but it's really good <laughs> looking forward to it and then i have two that are quite similar to each other so i have nora roberts blood magic which is the third in the cousins o'dwyer series this is set in ireland it is paranormal romance it follows uh, a trio of cousins, and this is the grand finale. And then I also have Lisa Kessler's Pirate's Passion, which is the second book in the 
Sentinels of Savannah series. This is also paranormal romance, but I actually classify it a little bit more as urban fantasy. One, because it's urban set, um, but also um, it has a. It does feel like it has a bit of a longer plot. I would say Blood Magic does as well. It ha which has it has a history piece, a family history piece. So it has some going back and forth. Not a huge amount. It's not dual timeline amount, but there is history um, like in the family, and there's something I can't quite remember it's been a while since I've read it so anyway there's something there <laughs> I don't know really there is a piece their history piece but anyway the pirate's passion this is urban I say it's urban fantasy because it's a uh, set in the city and um, also it has a longer arc plot uh, book to book I think um, from what I can tell this is the second book in the series and it's about immortal pirates Immortal urban fantasy with immortal pirates. I love the first one, Magnolia Mystic, so very much. And I also really loved, I love the first book, Dark Witch, in this one. I can't remember what the second one is. I'm really looking forward to this one because I really like the the couple in this one. I really like their chemistry or banter. They're, I, it was like, you know they're going to be the couple because they're like the two people left, but like they don't get along that much, so that'll be interesting. So, and this one, um, both of them, I've only read the first chapter. <laughs> So there's a lot of pages to go on those, and overall, I, I really most of these I have only read the first bit. Polar Vortex I've read the most, 100 pages out of uh, 283, but generally speaking, most of these are almost new starts, so that's very different from last week, I think. It's hard to remember. I don't know. And then I do have my one extra pick of the week, and um, I'm giving myself one extra pick for something from the library, something from Hoopla that's going to expire, um, and uh, being able to read it before it does. And for this week, I actually picked The Saga of Swamp Thing by Alan Moore. Um, I really, I loved the Swamp Thing movie from the 80s. Sorry, I get the reflection of my <laughs> lamp there. It's a little weird. Um, but, uh, and I enjoyed the TV series that was out uh, in the past couple of years. It wasn't great, but I, I loved it. And um, it's an interesting idea, uh, but the, the series in terms of the comics is really, really, really long, and I didn't know where to start. But this is the saga of Swamp Thing, book one, so I, I'm, gonna, I'm hoping it might be a good place to start. I don't know. So anyway, I only have it for nine more days. So it's my read before it expire picks. So there you go. So I am going to time my reading with these. I have two physical and three digital um, this time around, which is the same as last time, actually. And it it's that's actually worked out quite well. So and Pirate's Passion is on Scribd on ebook. And then these two I have physically and the other two I think I have from the library so the yeah so a little bit of everything and um we're gonna get this party started you can tell by my energy I'm feeling very party ee -E. I'm a little intimidated this week I'm not gonna lie these are these are a little tougher a little tougher for different reasons but um but also a little lighter with the urban fantasy and paranormal in two, but I don't usually read two of the same genre at the same time. And that's really specific and only read the first chapter, so I'm a little stumped on that. Doesn't ha I don't have to be stumped. I just have to read, time my reading. That's what I need to do next. That's what I will do next. That's what we're going to go do. Okay, so I have done my cue card for the week with my five titles. I've run into some challenges, particularly with Blood Magic, because I don't have... A total number of pages for it um, in either of the versions I have it. So this version, which is on Overdrive from the Toronto Public Library, it has what page I'm on in each chapter. So see page one of 22, but it doesn't say what page I am on in the book. If you hold it down, you do get the book progress. So you have the percentage. So because I've read one chapter and I know that the first chapter is 23 pages, that means if I'm 24 pages into the book, I'm at 6.9. I'll leave the formula down below how to figure out from that how many pages are in the book. It's not perfect, um, but it's the best that I could do with this. The other version I have of it doesn't have any page numbers at all. It just has locations, and that really doesn't work for me when I'm doing tracking, so I'll probably read it this way. I also really like having the page count like this, but if you increase or decrease the font, it'll have a different number of pages. Let's see if I know how to do that. It's not that one. No, no, I just created a bookmark. Font size, so 
let's make it smaller. And so now all of a sudden I only have 16 pages. So, but I'm still at 6.9%. So technically with math, that means the first chapter, you know, it means 6.9% of 16 should also be 333, but it's probably not because that can't be the case. So it is imperfect. So I probably will go with this version because at least I have something to work with. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I've been holding my camera a lot. I apologize for that wobbliness. Um, so yeah. So actually, you know, to be quite honest, that has been a reason to not read it because of just trying to figure out to count the pages. So I have that. And then I also have the structure of scientific revolution. I don't know whether to include the notes at the end or the not or not for the decreasing page count, like for the total. So I'm not sure. I'm only on page eight for that. Uh -huh. Most of these I've only just started. Polar Vortex, I've read the most. I'm at 100 pages, but most of these, it's I'm only a couple chapters in. Wow. Well, okay. So I, you know, I think I'm going to go with this version because at least I have the page numbers. I'm tracking my num page numbers this week, you know? Um, so I think that's what I'm going to go with. I can think you can tell by the tone of my voice. I'm not terribly thrilled with that, but, uh, I'm going to work with it and revise if need be and uh, take it from there. Okay, so I have now made a cup of tea, yay, did the dishes, tidied up a bit, and I had some music on while I did the dishes, and some great songs came on, so I had like a mini dance break, which was perfect, and I just sort of like danced away some of my like frustrations, <laughs> and uh, now I am totally ready to read, uh, back in the groove of things, it's good to remember, you know, so these things can pass, and um, yeah, and so I am ready to see how things go. I think I'm going to start with some nonfiction and, um, and <laughs> see what happens. Here we go. So let's let's do a quote. Okay, quote time. So this the structure of scientific revolution here, page eight. I'm still on the first page. Um, scientific fact and theory are not categorically separable, except perhaps within a single tradition of normal scientific practice, with normal scientific being hyphenated. That is why the unexpected discovery is not simply factual in its import, and why the scientist's world is qualitatively transformed as well as quantitatively enriched by fundamental novelties of either fact or theory. It's interesting, but I gotta admit, by the time I got to the end of the second sentence, I, I lost the thread. I lost the thread. So this is definitely going to be a challenge. It's engaging and interesting. Um, I don't hold too lightly that I don't remember and understand everything. Um, I'm not going to. If I do, I will never finish the book. So I'm just going to keep going. Although I got to say, it wasn't the best to start. The first word on the first page when I came back to this was nor. So nor are new inventions the theory of, nor what? So I had to go to the previous page and like sort of scan and go halfway up and stuff like that. So I am only like a minute or two into reading this and but I've already been reading it for like I had to go back and then I had to reset the counter. So <laughs> yeah, this is not going to be my fast pace, but we're just gathering information scientifically and um, I'm not going to hold that this is going to obviously be a slow read. I I would have no expectations otherwise, to be honest. So, all right, back to it for me. <laughs> back to it.
Okay, I have done my timed reading for the day. So here are the results and let's do nonfiction first. So first up, the structure of scientific revolutions. I have a reading pace of 24 pages per hour. I ended up reading eight pages in 20 minutes. Then for the diary of Aeneas Nin, my pages per hour is 22 pages per hour. So that's even takes even longer to read pages in this one. Trying not to use fast and slow as words here. Um, so those that was the nonfiction. So both of the nonfiction take a fair amount of time. So that is a change from uh, last week. Now for the fiction for Polar Vortex, I read 42 pages per hour. It's pretty, that makes sense to me. It is um, a literary fiction, Canadian fiction. So my normal pace for... Um, fiction is more like 60 pages per hour which is a page a minute so this takes a little bit longer i'm not surprised at that it's literary fiction i think the other gauges i had on my spreadsheet for this one were around 42 45 so that makes sense to me 42 pages and then to the um urban fantasy paranormal romances for blood magic i read 86 pages per hour so that's actually pretty pretty fast so one page takes 45 seconds is that right I think that's right not sure um so and then for pirates passion my my reading pace was 115 pages per hour wow now that being said for both pirates passion and blood magic I did decide to go back and reread the first chapter for blood magic I only read the first chapter and for pirates passion I read the first chapter and then the next little bit but it's it's fast paced goodness oh my gosh one of the things I loved about pirates passion right from the get go is that the people the the who appears to be the couple seem really interested in each other and I love that I love stories where that's the case and there's an external problem to be solved it's not tension between the two people or you know the people that are involved in the romantic relationship or entanglement I love that external issue not you know something between the people so I am a huge fan I found that to be the case when I read Magnolia Mystic which is the first book um and uh you know like there was some you know but generally speaking you know they were into each other and I'm like yeah that's great <laughs> you know it is a romance novel there's nothing wrong with that so but um but I am a little like um feeling like should I or shouldn't I include the pages that I reread in terms of my um 2000 for the month or 500 for the week and I'm I actually am just going to include them between the two it's it's 40 pages I think that's a drop in the bucket right that's what two two percent of the total pages I'm not going to worry about it like you know hopefully hopefully I get to 2040 pages and I don't have to worry about like it's a big enough number that I think it's fine to include the reread the reread pages um and I'm glad that I did for both of them because with Pirate's Passion I remembered it pretty well it follows a woman who is a historian she works at a museum she's a doctor yeah so she's got her PhD and um she is an expert in um pirates and uh you know seafaring stuff and there's a sort of arm of the government that deals with paranormal uh, threats, basically. And so she is approached uh, by someone um, from there to get information about the Sea Dog, which is the um, a pirate ship. Um, and then the, but he's, that person is not the love interest. The love interest is the lead singer of the Scallywags, um, who happens to be an immortal pirate so and they ended up uh seeing each other because she her a friend of hers or a co-worker dared her to a night of yeses and so that sped things up rather quickly so that was great they have great chemistry it is it was exciting right off the bat and then blood magic i'm glad that i reread it because i didn't remember um there, it's it's follow the series follows like a family and there's a a trio of siblings so there's three siblings they're not triplets there are three siblings and they sort of get they don't get reincarnated but like over the years uh their 
magic ends up because three three people of the next generation will kind of inherit or be imbued by or be tasked with the magic and the task of the family and it goes generation to generation and so it started with the like the historical sibling set um and it eventually uh in the present it will be the cousins because it's the cousins of Dwyer so I'm glad that I reread it because it has the names and the cousin the three siblings who be later are end up being cousins they uh or end up it representing it's not reincarnation it's I, I hope that's clear um so anyway but the siblings the the they each have sort of like character traits that end up being passed down to sort of like the other person who's like this type of person and that type of person and I didn't you know I haven't read that series for years so I'm glad that I reread the beginning so I'm more centered in who's who and what the big task is because there's sort of it's not necessarily sort of like a prophecy but there is a sort of generational piece and a big bad and 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 there were wonderful things I forgot that there was a there's a, a uh, I think a hound um, that's like a family like um, pet ish guardian thing. I was just I love that series I just love it I, just, I found it a very very um, warm and I love stories about siblings I'm from a larger sibling set I have um, so I like stories about siblings not huge but you know like um, so yeah so anyway so that was really enjoyable I did with the Diary of Aeneas Nin. I did realize. Sorry about that. I forgot to turn notifications off. Um, uh, I did come across where my sticking point was from last time, which was that she mentions Proust, and I haven't read any Proust, and I don't know if she's referring to him like as a person and the things that he's going through, or she's referring to his work and a story within his work, because she relays this thing about Proust to to someone in her life and um and uh you know and there's an analogy there so I actually and some people would shock horror on this I actually just skipped that like I just would jump that that section because Proust had like it there's a lot there's a lot, like, if, that would be almost completely abandoning this book for many years if I was going to go read the reference material for that. So, um, and I don't want to look it up because often, and I don't want to, even the, the, she's talking about, because this is nonfiction, and she's talking about Henry and June, and I'm not 100% sure who Henry is. Is it, it could, it's probably Henry, is it Henry Miller? Um, but I know if I look it up on Wikipedia, I could, like, easily in one line find out something that's like their whole relationship or or something about Henry and June or whatever and I'm just enjoying it as it is oh I, I highlighted a quote this clip is a bit long so I feel like I shouldn't try and find it but um like her writing is so beautiful it you know where is the some of them are conversations, some of them are letters. One of the things that I find interesting about this is that it's a diary, but she often has, dang, I don't think I bookmarked where I was. I wrote down the page. Um, but she has these whole like iterations of conversations with quotes that he said this and I said this and he said this and I said that. And I'm like, wow, I can't imagine trying, trying to write that, you know? Um, oh, this was, this was just an interesting concept. Um, this is on page 60. I have always been tormented by the image of multiplicity of selves. Some days I call it richness, and other days I see it as a disease, a proliferation as dangerous as cancer. My first concept about people around me was that all of them were coordinated into a whole, whereas I was made up as a multitude of selves of fragments. I know that I was upset as a child to discover we only had one life. It seems to me I wanted to compensate for this by multiplying experience, or perhaps always, or perhaps it always seems like this when you follow an impulse and it takes you in different directions. Like, 
I mean, like, my brain is just going and my heart is feeling and being able to read something that engages on both levels. Well, I didn't even know how, how that's a sort of power dynamic, like having those both things being the brain engaged and the heart feeling. Ah, uh, uh -huh. it makes me go like, why read anything else? You know, why read anything else? So that was just absolutely wonderful. And just if you're curious, because it's page 60, it's from the section that starts February 1932. So very, very engaging read. I'm glad that I'm back to it. We'll see as the week goes if I come across other literary references that I stumble on and I'll have to figure out what to do about that. But I am very, very happy to be back into reading it. Um, And so far all of these are going well. I didn't talk too much about Polar Vortex, I think because I wanted to. There's a bit of comparison between Blood Magic and Pirate's Passion and I'm not sure what to do about that because they are pretty similar. And like my gut tells me that it'd probably be like, or my brain tells me it'd probably be smartest to pick one, but like I like them both, but I don't want to get them confused. And once Blood Magic gets into the present day, even though it's set in Ireland and it's set in the country ish, there's a stables and there's like you can go, I think, hawking, like there's hawks and there's animals and magic and family it's all good things um so and then pirate's passion is like racy and like engaging and like you know government people and like pirates and i don't know what to do oh what i know what to do next which is math let's see did i actually i have a feeling i did not make 72 pages because um, um a lot of these were slower reads i didn't have other pirates passion was pretty fast but i didn't okay so the structure of scientific revolutions eight Diary of Aeneas Nin, 7. <laughs> Polar Vortex, 12. It's not looking good. Blood Magic, 23. And Pirate's Passion, 12. Oh, 62. 62. So I just need to read 10 more pages. I am in the middle of a chapter for Pirate's Passion, so I could probably finish that off. Um, so I think I will be curious enough to pick up that or Blood Magic or Polar Vortex and read a little bit more tonight. I'm not going to worry about my extra read uh, yet, um, like Swamp Thing. I have enough going on and I'm not going to worry about if I'm going to pull in any of the other books that I'm currently reading like I did last week with Last Night at the Lobster and her gallant captain at Waterloo. I'm not going to worry about that. This is enough to engage with. These are a fair amount of these are heavier, um, but I am enjoying everything. The structure of scientific revolution is the toughest. I glean the least from it, um, but I this is an interesting. This is interesting. I, I am glad that I'm uh, enjoying them and sticking with them. Um, so as far as I know, it's only day one. Um, so, but most of these, I'm very very early days, um, like in the only read the first chapter. So I'm not going to let that intimidate me. Just going to see where things go. I fingers crossed I get 10 more pages and, uh, and, uh, we'll see uh, how the week progresses. I wish, oh, I wish I had 10 more pages, but it's really late in the day and I need to switch gears to get some other things done, including some of the vlogs up. And so, uh, we'll just, we'll just hope. And then we'll hope there's new fishing quests because goodness gracious, I have two more to get before I can switch from Outlands to North End, and uh, I really hope, I really hope, hope that uh, old man, I can't remember the character's name, the NPC name, Barlow, or old man Barlow, I hope he's got something new for me today, I hope, let's, let's hope. All right, thank you for coming on the journey for week two, uh, and uh, we'll see where things go. I forgot to mention, if you want to figure out your own reading pace, um, I will link up above and down below uh, Brock's spreadsheet, Brock from Let's Read. He does an annual reading spreadsheet where you can calculate a whole bunch of stuff. You can put the books that you read, the books that you bought. There's a tab for series progression. It does charts. It does lists. It does percentages. It's awesome. And um, this year he did add a section, a tab for uh, your reading speed or your reading pace or your pages per hour. I can't remember what it's called. He talks about it in the intro video. And uh, yeah, so you can enter in that formula, in that spreadsheet. Um, uh, it's a Google Sheets uh, uh, document. And is it document the word-ish one? It's an Excel thing. It's a Google Excel-ish thing, you know, like that. And it's a spreadsheet, but it's under Google. You can just save your own copy use as you see fit. And uh, yeah, and he also usually pins it to the top of his Twitter account. So that's Brock from the Street. 
Brock is awesome, check him out. And uh, yeah, so that's how I um, figure out, I, time math escapes me, so I was very, very thankful that Brock included it this year, and uh, I find it very, very helpful. So there you go. Okay, let's see. I am hoping for the cooking quest of Soup for the Soul from The Rock. Let's see what he has for us. Need to be closer. What's up? <sighs> Revenge is tasty. I have done that one. Hmm, I will just... Mm -hmm. Oh, I really don't like anything. Larry Wing, that is a big pain. I'm going to leave it and wait for it to reset. I love the goblins. Hey, I am off to see the fishing dude and hoping for either crocodiles in the city or fell blood fillet. Let's see what he has to offer. Old man Barlow, what's he got? You need something? The one that got away. I have done that one. <sighs> not today, I guess. Today is not the day. <laughs> 